What if Naruto was never born? Or at least, what if Naruto died after birth or something like that? The main premise of the story I want to tell, the main question I wish to ask is, what if Naruto didn't get his hands on the story like he normally would? This could be for a number of reasons. Maybe Minato couldn't save him from Obito. There are a whole bunch of ways that things could go wrong here, and Naruto's survival truly can only be attributed to Obito's mercy and Minato's quick actions. So let's take one of these away and just see how the Naruto world would react, shall we? Once more, I ask you, my Amagites, to gaze up into the full moon and into the Rinne Sharingan I reflect there so that I may show you another of my infinite Tsukiyomi. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Minato Namakaze, the fourth Hokage, was the fastest ninja alive. You could ask anyone. Maybe a few of them would lie, but even the Raikage himself could agree. Minato Namakaze was the fastest. And for a ninja, speed was tantamount to power. When you could cast any jutsu, when you could weave any hand sign and avoid any shot, you were in control of the battle. But Minato himself was haunted. Haunted by the one time his speed was not enough to save the ones he cared for most. And that left his student, Kakashi Hatake, tortured and scarred. The deaths of Obito Uchiha and Rin Nohara were a lot for Minato to handle, and while he put on a brave face, he only got through it because he had Koshina at home waiting for him. Her tender care helped nurture his broken heart back to health, but Kakashi had nothing of the sort, which was why he insisted that Kakashi be Koshina's guardian while she was pregnant, hoping that this joyous occasion would bring some happiness back into his life. Obito and Rin it was such a tragedy that two so young should die. Their lives should end at the cusp of life. Thirteen years old was the age of Obito. How could anyone justify such a death? Not even an adult yet. Minato looked back on all these things and wondered why they had to be. This was not what Hashirama Senju would have wanted. He fought for this village and founded it, creating it to be a place where children no longer needed to fight and die on the battlefield where they no longer were expected to fight for their village and lose their innocence to the bloodstains of battle, to the shell shock and trauma that followed home every man, woman, and beast to set foot on that bloody grass. But even though he had dreamed such, it had never come to pass. A wonderful village had formed and a new world order had risen up in its place, the end of the feudal era and the rise of nations under their daimyo. Despite this, it didn't end the fighting. It merely changed the rules a bit. Instead of a battle royale as it always had been, it became a more orderly fight that witnessed even more death. The Great Ninja Wars. The wars that raged on eternally. Another excuse for men to slaughter each other. Lord Forth, came the voice of Biwako Saratobi. Your seal is slipping. Concentrate. Minato then realized that in his daydreaming, he had forgotten to continue enforcing the seal, keeping Kushina alive. He pushed his hand back to her stomach. As he touched it, her skin felt incredibly hot. Sweat appeared from every pore. He looked at her face and saw she was in pure agony, but of course she was. She was giving birth. She looked at him for a moment and spoke. Easily the most painful thing I've ever done. She giggled a bit, drawing a nervous chuckle from Minato. Biwako shot her a look that startled her. Push, Kushina, like lives depend on it, because they do. Minato shook his head and brought himself back to the moment fully. Why think about death? Why think about things that made him sad? This was the birth of his firstborn child. He should be happy. He shouldn't be thinking about death. He forced his chakra back into the seal. Kurama was so desperately attempting to get out. With Kushina's chakra weakened, he was starting to break open the seal. Minato's chakra was supposed to help reinforce the seal, but he had always underestimated the power of this beast. Even with his chakra reserves, the Ninetales was still breaking out. He needed to resort to new methods now. As it figured out the seals via trial and error, Minato continued to change the seal. He was forcing Kurama to play catch up with him to slow him down. He just needed to do this until Naruto was born. All he needed to do was stall for time. That's literally it. It's coming, Biwako shouted. The baby is coming! She looked over Kushina's knees. Home stretch, dear. If you have anything left in the tank, now's the time to use it. Push! Kushina began to strain, eventually breaking into a startling cry that Minato had only ever heard on the battlefield. The look on her face, though, was pure determination. Never again, Minato said to himself. Never again. One baby's fine. I'm not letting her go through this again. Kushina's voice rose higher and then slipped into a squeal right at the end as she expended the last of her oxygen. The crying was then taken over by a smaller voice as Kushina's head fell back on the table, Minato scrambling to cushion her head with his own hand to ensure that she didn't hurt herself. 
He checked the seal once more to find that it was holding. Kushina's body had instinctively taken over the process of keeping Kurama in. It was safe. He could let her go now. He came to her side and brushed away one of the strands of hair in her face. He gave her a light peck on the cheek. I love you, he said to her in a hushed tone. Words meant only for her. Gratitude for giving him his greatest wish. She offered a weak smile. The muscles in her hand were contracting slightly, causing the thumb of her left hand to twitch. It was due to her hand squeezing tightly to the grip. She had gripped it so hard that it looked like the wood had splintered. Biwako and the other nurses were fawning over the baby, but Biwako was a wise and kind woman, who knew that the only person deserving to enjoy the first few moments of this child's life was Kushina. So after snipping the cord, they took a soft towel and gently cleaned and swaddled the baby, bringing him to his mother. Kushina's movements were slow and weak, but gently her arms wrapped around the baby, Minato's hands hovering nearby to offer extra support to his wife's weak muscles. She kissed the baby's head and welcomed him to the world. Minato took a step back from the scene and took it all in. He was so pleased. He was so happy. He was so about to puke. He turned around, his nerves catching up with him. Finding a nearby bucket, every nervous feeling he had, he let out with a simple heave. The nurses nearby were shocked, with Biwako laughing at his pain. Hiruzen was the same way when we had our first. Hell, he was like that when Asuma was born. Minato leaned against the wall with his hand. He attempted to catch his breath before going for round two. Once that was done, he spit into the bucket and took a deep breath and returned to full height. All right, I'm ready to see my baby now. He turned around to find the room a bloody wasteland. Kushina was weakly reaching up for Naruto, crying for help. Minato looked up to see a masked individual holding his son. He held out his hand. Please, wait. The man stood there silently, a kunai to the infant's throat. And what will you give me if I do? Minato came to Kushina's side and put a hand on his shoulder to calm her, his gaze never breaking from the man. What do you want? The man feigned thinking for a second. The Nine Tails would be a good start. Minato looked down at Kushina. You can't be serious. Why would you want that? The masked man scoffed. It's like asking why grass grows or why wood burns. The answer is obvious. There's only ever one reason why anybody wants a tailed beast. Power. Just put the baby down and we can talk about this, Minato said. Put the baby down, the masked man asked. Sure. Okay, fine. Since we're all so civil, he threw the child into the air and pointed his kunai up. Minato rushed in, jumping into the air to grab Naruto. At that moment, the man rushed Kushina and teleported her out via Kamui. Minato caught the child and landed on the ground. He didn't have enough time to breathe though. The swaddling was coated in paper bombs. He pulled the swaddling off and threw it to the side before teleporting out via flying Raijin. He was so quick that he felt the concussive force of the blast but couldn't hear the sound. He arrived at his home with Naruto and sighed a heavy sigh of relief. We're safe, he said. He then felt a chakra signature and suddenly realized the horror. There was one more paper bomb and this one was attached to the infant's back. No, was the only thing his mind could formulate before the bomb detonated. The little home they lived in had the windows shattered as the door opened via the pressure. Minato was thrown from the building a good couple meters. He landed on his side and rolled as the flames of the house began to rise, reaching up to the heavens. Minato rolled as he felt the blistering agony. Looking down, he saw that his flak jacket had taken plenty of damage. Small holes were present everywhere. Shrapnel was everywhere. No, it wasn't shrapnel. It was bone, human bone, Naruto's bones. In that moment, a rush of pain echoed through his body. Not physical pain, even though that pain was present in his burned and scarred arms. His heart was ripped from his chest. It felt like he had died too. Elsewhere in the village, Hiruzen couldn't help but get a strange sense of foreboding. Something was wrong. Something was very wrong. Hiruzen's mother always had the gift. She could sense things before they happened, and Hiruzen had the gene too. He could sense when things were off. When something had happened or was about to happen, and right now Hiruzen sensed an extraordinary amount of pain. Someone was in pain, horrible pain, and that pain was about to be multiplied a thousandfold. As he anguished in his seat, feeling as if he were about to have a panic attack, his prophecy fulfilled itself as the Ninetales appeared in the village. Hiruzen heard the puff that marked its appearance, heard the destruction, heard the crashing sounds and the war cry of the Ninetales. He ran to the balcony to see Kurama rise to its hind legs and howl, each tail moving like a whip, smashing building after building, leveling entire city blocks. Hiruzen turned around and moved with all the spryness of a man a quarter his age. He began to get his weapons and armor. As he struggled to get his gear on in a timely fashion, he realized the cold, hard truth. Something had gone wrong during the delivery. 
Due to this, he could only assume that everyone in the vicinity was dead. Due to the unsure status of Minato Namikaze, Hiruzen needed to take charge. The chain of command could not afford to be disrupted, not at such a critical moment. As he grabbed his staff, he summoned Enma, who had not expected to be called at this hour. He began to explain what little of the situation he knew. The Nine Tails has escaped its Jinchuriki and is on a rampage. I'm unsure of Minato's survival. We need to move quickly or the village is going to end. Kushina lay chained, held up only by her arms and her will to live. The masked man lingered over her and only looked down the nose of his mask at her. Suddenly, a chill ran down his spine. It was as if death had just passed him by. He turned back and saw Minato, standing in the pitch black darkness. All he could see was the torn flak jacket, charred arms, and cold, blank white eyes glowing in the darkness. This man had once been Obito's master. This man had once been known for his kindness and joyful nature, but now, now Obito was scared. This person before him held the form of his mentor, but like some demonic entity portraying the image of someone he knew, it held none of the things that made Minato Minato. Obito turned to see him and activated his Mangekyo. Not that he would have done any less for Minato, but right now Obito was not taking any chances. He needed to be ready. He needed to stand firm because whatever this was, it wasn't the same Minato he knew. This form was not one even seen during the Third Shinobi World War. This made Minato unpredictable. This made him more dangerous. Minato stood there silently for a moment, a shuriken dangling by its ring around his finger. Suddenly, in a flash, Minato was right in front of Obito. As he swiped at Obito, the masked man could hear the blades spinning past his head, carving through the air. Every so often, the blades grinding against each other, giving an audible illusion of heavy machinery. Minato's movements were not logical movements. His fighting style was chaotic. Obito couldn't even imagine doing what Minato was doing. Obito couldn't even move one finger clockwise while moving another finger counterclockwise. Minato was doing this six times, all while his strikes with his hands and feet gave an odd illusion that he was off balance, but still being unable to be knocked over. He would kick and punch at Obito, and at the same time unleashing jutsu without hand signals. What was this? Had rage and insanity given way to unbridled potential? Was this truly what Minato was capable of? Was this the monster he hid in his heart, now manifest? Primal rage. Lethal potential. Only through madness could he break through his shell and make use of the powers that rivaled even the likes of Hashirama Senju. Obito hoped he would make it out of this alive, but he knew that even if he did, he wouldn't be free of this man. No, what he witnessed here today would haunt his dreams for the rest of his life. Perhaps what was even more startling was the knowledge that Minato was hurt, even through his pain, even through the lacerated organs and burned skin caused by his proximity to the blast, he was still fighting. Blood running from his mouth, nose, and eyes, he continued to move, giving off an air of immortality. The feeling that nothing Obito did would ever stop or even slow Minato down or keep the demon Kage from claiming his life. The sheer terror Minato gave off was enough to cause Obito to scramble. He had the advantage. He had everything he needed to overcome Minato, but he couldn't. He freaked out and teleported away in his terror simply because Minato was terrifying. With Obito now out of the picture, he turned to Kushina, who looked at him. Minato? He stepped closer to her, his blades still spinning. Minato, she asked again, looking into the shattered psyche of the man she loved. She knew everything instinctively. Is our baby dead? She asked through tears and heavy emotion. Minato knelt before her, his expression softening to kindness once again, his blue eyes like the sky filling with tears, like the precipitation of a summer rain shower. The shuriken fell from his fingers as he hugged onto her. He heaved and cried, sounding as if he might hyperventilate in her arms. She kissed his neck kindly, as it was the only thing she could do tied up at this angle. What of the Nine Tails? she asked. He looked up. Nine? She nodded weakly. It's escaped. Minato's face froze in fear. He couldn't sense it before, but there was a difference to her chakra. He suddenly pulled a kunai and broke the chains holding her. He lifted her. We need to seal it. Hiruzen was leading the shinobi through the battlefield. Hearing a cry from a burning building, he pointed to it and told the squad to quench the flames with water-type jutsu. They ran into the building to rescue those within. We must push back against the Nine Tails. Push the assault. Use the village's terrain to our advantage. All the same though, he knew that they were at a true disadvantage here. This beast could decide to wipe out the village anytime it wanted. To expect anything less was foolish. This was a weapon of mass destruction. Fully realized Jinchuriki could only just get to the strength of a full-powered tailed beast, and they couldn't even dream to come close to one that was on a rampage. This was the end. The end of the village. The end of their way of life. Hiruzen began to consider their next steps. He looked back. Gather as many shinobi as you can, and find anyone with a strong enough will. We're going to seal this beast away, even if it takes our souls to do it. They all knew what that meant. The Reaper Death Seal. 
Whether the Ninetales had heard them or if it was just coincidence, this was unknown. Regardless, the tailed beast began to charge a tailed beast ball. All Shinobi stopped and looked at it. That was it. Curtains. That tailed beast ball would be all it took to destroy everything and everyone. Just then, a light could be seen from the Hokage Monument. Stepping out, more like stumbling out, was Minato. His clothes were dirty, torn and bloody, and his face was not much different. He looked like he could barely stand. He raised a kunai. Please, let this work, he prayed as he spun the kunai around in circles. He began to infuse it with wind-style chakra. Fly straight and true, kunai, he shouted as he threw the blade at the Ninetales. The kunai would strike it right between the eyes. Not that this did anything but annoy Kurama. All things considered, though, this was not designed to hurt him. This was designed to give Minato a landing platform. Suddenly, Minato teleported over with his flying Raijin Jutsu and gripped onto the Ninetales before once again making use of the flying Raijin technique to teleport the beast out of the village. In a single moment, it was gone. Hiruzen was confused. He looked around for it, wondering where it had gone. Suddenly, there was a bright flash in the distance. Hiruzen pointed toward it. That way! Go in that direction! He shouted as they began to make their way out of the village proper and toward the hidden home that Minato and Kushina often retreated to. As the group came into the vicinity of the home, they witnessed craters and the like all about them. A battle had taken place here, but where the Nine Tails was, they didn't know. They continued to walk about, searching for any clue. Suddenly, someone called out to Hiruzen. Hiruzen rushed over to see Minato and Kushina laying against a tree. Kushina once more possessed the Eight Trigram Seal though a quick test of her vitals informed them that she was indeed dead. Hiruzen looked down momentarily in sorrow. They gave their lives to protect us, he said. What will we do now? One of the shinobi asked. Who will lead the village? Hiruzen looked to each of them. The Council of Elders will decide on the next course of action. Whoever they decide should be Hokage will become next Hokage. Until then, I will serve an interim. Now, gather their bodies. They should be put to rest like true heroes. Hiruzen stood and looked at the smoldering building where likely the baby had been resting. Who would do such a thing? Suddenly, he heard a gasp and a cry as they moved Kushina. One of the shinobi screamed out to Hiruzen, Lord Forth is still alive! He was rushed to the ER. He was in critical state. When he was finally out, they brought him to the most secure room with the most experienced Anbu agents guarding not only the room, but the entire floor. They didn't get in the doctor's way, but they kept an eye on everything. It was a national emergency, yes, but the Hokage was still here, and they needed to protect him. Hiruzen would stay with him for a while. His body was littered with burns and scars. They had him on a ventilator and with so many wires and tubes that Hiruzen wondered how the doctors would get to him in the first place if he ever needed it. As Hiruzen sat there, he could only imagine what Minato might be dreaming about at that moment. Minato had teleported the beast back to the home with him before falling from the beast and hitting the ground. Kurama would attempt to smash him, but Kushina would cry out to stop, and would use her adamantine chains to grab Minato and drag him to safety. As the Nine Tails drew closer, Minato began to stir a bit. Kushina knew that neither of them were in the position to fight, so she simply opted to attempt resealing the beast inside of her. At the very least, she could take it with her to the grave. She would begin to pull the beast into her. Kurama would resist, but she had it chained, pulling out every stop just to bring the beast down. She would seal it into herself. Minato would be roused from his unconscious state and would ask her what happened. She told him that she had resealed the Ninetales in preparation for her death and had opted to take the Ninetales with her in order to protect everyone. Minato shook his head and held her in his arms, laying her against his chest. No, damn it. No, don't die. You can't die. You can't leave me alone, he shouted. Today was supposed to be one of the best days of my life. I was not only a husband, but I was finally going to be a father. I lost Naruto. Please, don't make me lose you too. She put her hand on his leg to tell him that it was going to be okay. He was going to be okay. Minato shook his head. What am I going to do without you? She smiled at him. You're going to live. She then faded in his arms. Kushina? Kushina! 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 He shouted out as his eyelids opened. Hiruzen heard this and quickly got rid of the newspaper he was holding. He came to Minato's side. Minato! Minato, can you hear me? Minato cut his eyes to Hiruzen. Yeah. Hiruzen sighed in relief. Thank you. Goodness, I thought you would never wake up. Minato looked at him weakly. Where am I? You're in Konoha General. Minato looked around. He raised his hands up to see that his arms had scars on them from the burns. He looked down at his torso to see smaller scars running across his body in various places. Scars he hadn't had before. What is this? He asked. You have a lot of internal trauma. Internal bleeding. The doctors say you're fortunate to have survived. With the level of damage you'd taken, most people would have died. Surgery scars. Hiruzen nodded. Those are where they had to cut to stop the internal bleeding. They're already healed, Minato said with surprise. Hiruzen nodded. They are. 
How long was I out? Minato asked, knowing that this sort of thing could have only healed to this degree after two weeks. Was he really out that long? Hiruzen looked out the window for a moment and sighed. Minato, you've been asleep for nine months. Minato was surprised. Nine months? His heart began to race. Hiruzen tried to calm him down. Don't worry, don't worry. I've been taking command since you've been out. What's happened? Hiruzen thought it best not to tell him. Minato had literally just woken up from a nine-month coma. He was not in the position to deal with that kind of stress. So Hiruzen held it back and didn't tell him anything. You just need to focus on getting better, Hiruzen told him. Minato took a while to recover. They kept watching him and helping rehabilitate him. All the while, Minato continued to keep an eye out for any information. But he understood that Hiruzen was attempting to protect him. But what Hiruzen did not realize was that holding back world news from him, especially since Minato was the Hokage, one of the most powerful people in the world, stressed him out even more than before. He would take in some new information and found out that Konoha was on a hair trigger. The world was on a balancing act and old wounds would never completely heal. The tailed beasts were the only thing keeping the balance of power, and now Konoha was without its only tailed beast, and this meant that the other countries were just looking for a reason to kill them. To be frank, no nation or village had friends outside of themselves, but what was worse was that these countries all hated Konoha more than they hated each other, so it seemed highly likely that eventually a war would break out. The question was, why one hadn't yet? Eventually, Minato was discharged, and he was returned to his office where Hiruzen began to explain why. The reason we have yet to go to war is because the other villages believe that the Ninetales is still in Konoha, or at least I've subverted their beliefs a little. Even if it's not true, and even if they think it isn't true, I've been recruiting double agents and decoy agents to spread false information that Konoha still has its Jinchuriki. I've also made contact with other agents of foreign powers that do not know that we know that they're foreign agents. We've been spreading false information to at least cause them doubt. It's no secret that the Ninetales is the strongest beast, and I've been using that to my advantage. Nonetheless, we need to come up with a plan. In the coming years, Kurama will respawn, and when that happens, the rest of the world will know that we are defenseless. So we need to start preparations for both the war and for getting the Ninetales back. But we need to do it in an inconspicuous way. Minato nodded. Then, first things first, we need to get into contact with Fugaku. Hiruzen scratched his head. The Uchiha are a little upset with us. Minato raised his eyes to look at Hiruzen. How so? Hiruzen began to explain. You see, while you were out, investigations were taking place, and the person who was responsible for this attack possessed a Sharingan. This led to assumptions that it was an Uchiha, as we don't see anyone outside of the village possessing the ability to do what happened those months ago. Minato thought about it. He took a piece of paper and began to draw something. Hiruzen looked at it. What are you drawing? Minato showed him. This is the Mongekyo Sharingan of the man who attacked me. Hiruzen was stunned. You saw it. I'll never forget it, Minato said. That's the Sharingan and I'd bet my life on it. Hiruzen looked at it. Well, we'll begin checking out the known Mongekyo Sharingan users. Minato nodded. I'm gonna go have a talk with Fugaku and see if we can't smooth things over. The Uchiha are one of our greatest allies. We cannot afford to lose them. And so they began to do as they said. Hiruzen began to check their databases for any match to this particular design of Mangekyo Sharingan, and Minato went to see Fugaku. He knocked on the door. Fugaku opened it to see Minato standing there. He had a look of shock at first, but he collected himself. Lord Forth, to what do we owe this honor? Just a friendly visit to an old friend. I mean, we did serve together in the war. Fugaku stood there silently. Can I come in? Minato asked. Fugaku nodded and pushed the door open, allowing Minato inside. As Minato entered, he witnessed Makoto in the main living quarters, playing with a toddler that seemed to be really getting the hang of this whole walk-in biz. Minato smiled. You have a beautiful family, Fugaku. I apologize for not visiting them earlier. Fugaku waved it off. The office of the Hokage is a busy job. So tell me, Lord Forth, is this business we should take by the dining room table over tea? Or is this business we should take care of in my office? Minato smiled. The office more than likely, but with tea still. Fugaku nodded. He called out to Makoto. Baby, can you put on a pot for our esteemed guest? She smiled. Of course. She then looked kindly to Minato. It's a blessing to our hearts to see you healthy, Lord Forth. Thank you, Minato said with a slight bow. Fugaku then led them up to his office. Opening the door, he allowed Minato in, closing the door behind him. You may sit wherever you desire. Minato found his seat and sat down as Fugaku made his way to the desk to sit down. What was it that you wanted to speak to me about? Fugaku asked. I just woke up about a week ago and I've been getting back on my feet. I got into the office today, and Hiruzen began filling me in on the situation, including the rumors that the Uchiha are upset. 
I wish to understand what has caused this situation and how I can alleviate it. There's been a lot of finger pointing going around. A Sharingan was seen within the gaze of the Ninetales on the night of the attack, and it's believed that we are responsible for it due to that. Minato nodded. I can understand your concerns, Fugaku, but I hope you can also understand ours. What happened that night was a very horrible thing. You and I are friends. If you tell me now, swear it not only on your life, but on the life of your wife, on the life of Itachi, and the life of Sasuke, that you did not have anything to do with this, and I'll believe you. I swear it, Lord Forth. Then I believe you, Minato said. But I do need your help with something. What is it? Fugaku asked. If we're facing a rogue shinobi with a Sharingan, then it could be anyone. I will need you to help us clear you and your clan's name. Help us discover who did this. That's easier said than done, Lord Forth. We've been trying for months, but to no avail. I understand, but we have a new lead, and this time it's something that you can help us with. Minato began to draw a pattern on a piece of paper. I faced the adversary and witnessed their Sharingan. It had a Mongekyo pattern, and I know that no Uchiha has the same Mongekyo twice. They're as unique as fingerprints. I need you to take this piece of paper and test every Uchiha who possesses a Mongekyo. Fugaku thought about this. That's a tall order. Most Uchiha keep the awakening of their Sharingan a secret, even to me. Can you not find a way to make them do it? You have some here who possess the Mongekyo Sharingan, correct? Why not have one you trust cast Genjutsu to make them show you? A Mongekyo's Genjutsu is stronger than a Three Tomoe's Genjutsu, so if they have a higher one, they'll need to use it to counter, or they'll fall into the Genjutsu. And if they fall into it, then you can simply force them to show you their Mongekyo if they have one. Fugaku shook his head. I don't think it's as simple as that. There could be complications, not to mention many people may view it as an invasion of their privacy. Minato sat silent as Fugaku spoke. I understand, but this is very important. Unless we do this, the Uchiha may never be exonerated. Fugaku thought about this for a moment. I have an idea. And so, from here, Fugaku employed the aid of Shisui Uchiha, whose Mongekyo Sharingan possessed the ability to cast a subtle Genjutsu that would make others desire to do the things that you wanted. A Genjutsu so subtle that nobody ever knew they were under it. And from that, with Minato and the other shinobi present, they were able to discover that not a single Uchiha's Sharingan matched that of the perpetrator. And due to this, Minato would exonerate the Uchiha, and officially announce that whoever was behind this was a rogue shinobi. But not long after, Minato got a notification that Kakashi had been arrested. Minato would rush to the Konoha police station, where Fugaku was already waiting for him. What happened? Minato asked. Fugaku held up a piece of paper. Kakashi Hatake was never suspected due to not being an Uchiha himself. But he possesses a transplanted Sharingan, and above that, his case is unusual, as he was somehow able to evolve it into a Mangekyo Sharingan state. Minato read the file on it. They had taken a picture of his Mangekyo Sharingan and added it to the file. Minato looked at it and then looked at his own drawing of the Sharingan and found that they'd matched. He then looked up and realized that, out of everyone, Kakashi would have known where Kushina was that night, as he'd been tasked with protecting her. Minato walked into the interrogation room. Kakashi, did you see this? Kakashi nodded. Yes, Lord Forth, but I assure you, it wasn't me. It wasn't? Then how do you explain this? Minato said. Lord Forth, I swear on Obito and Rin's graves, it wasn't me. Minato would hear this. That was no easy oath for Kakashi to make. Minato knew that Kakashi had suffered and what he had gone through. What do you think it is then? Minato asked. If not you, then who? Kakashi shook his head. I don't know. Minato sat there for a moment. Show it to me. Kakashi nodded and activated his Sharingan. Minato was a little surprised. Oh, it's in your left socket. Kakashi nodded. The person I fought with had this eye in their right socket. Does that exonerate me, Minato-sensei? Minato nodded. Yeah, it does. But the question is, if it wasn't you, then who was it? Kakashi looked down. Master. Minato leaned in. Yes? Kakashi looked back up. If what you said is true, and no Mongekyo Sharingan is ever the same, then someone is using Obito's right eye without our permission. Minato thought about it. Minato loved Obito as much as Kakashi did. This was a spit in their face. To use the eye of one so close to Minato to rob him of his wife and child, it was cruel, and someone was going to pay for it. And that's where I think I'm going to end this video for now. I hope you all enjoyed this. I know the title of this video is What If Naruto Was Never Born, and he was obviously born in this video, but I thought a name like What If He Died in Childbirth would be too dark, despite the darkness of the episode. So, while the name might be a slight lie, it catches the root effect of the video, to witness a world where Naruto does not exist. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below and what other videos you'd like to see. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified about more content like this. And until next time, peace.